Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, please have a seat, and uh, we'll start with the ceremony. Thank you, thank you. You know, I'm, I'm having to uh, get used to being in person, and uh, I, I keep wanting to tell all of you to uh, make sure that you keep your cameras on, but I don't need to. You're, you're actually, I'm actually seeing you in the flesh, so. Welcome, and thank you all so much uh, for coming out to celebrate uh, the winners of our 19th and 20th uh, K Fritz Awards program and uh, welcome to all of the winners. Can we give a round of applause for them? So welcome everybody to our gala. Uh, also welcome to the George Washington University, to the Student uh, Services Center, and also uh, know that this event is being streamed live. Uh, we have a few folks that cannot be here today, uh, and so they will be able to watch uh, streaming services. Um, the other thing, Mr. Calvin Kafritz is not able to be with us today, but he will be viewing it through uh, streaming services, and we do have pre-recorded messages from him as well. So if you're out there, uh, Calvin, welcome. As I mentioned before, this is a joint ceremony uh, due to the COVID pandemic. We, we chose not to have a uh, ceremony previous years. Um, and uh, so this is a combined ceremony and we're gonna be recognizing winners from our 19th um, uh, celebration, what would have been the 19th and the 20th as well. That will be combined. So there's going to be lots of folks coming up here getting awards. Um, so there's going to be uh, 10 individuals that we're going to recognize and uh, three teams. And we'll explain why it's three teams, not two. Um, and that has to do with some very special circumstances that the K. Fritz Foundation was very generous in recognizing. Um, to say a little bit about our Center for Excellence in Public Leadership, uh, my name is Jim Robinson and I'm the director of the Center for Excellence in Public Leadership here at GW. And we were actually founded, the, the center was founded 25 years ago and its founding mission was to develop uh, managers and leaders for the District of Columbia government. And this is at a time when DC was coming out of a very tough challenge and uh, it was well known that DC would have to make some major changes in how it governed, how it administered its government. And so that began our longstanding partnership with the District of Columbia government. And we have many, many graduates of our programs who've gone on to do great things and to be uh, part of the senior leadership team within the district. Overall, the mission for the center is that, is to um, develop public leaders who make a positive difference. Not only for their organizations, but for the people that their organizations serve. Um, so we're always keep in mind, are we making a difference in the lives of the people that we develop and train? And are they making a difference in their organizations and for the people that they serve? Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, some people today. Uh, we have with us uh, President Mark Wrighton. President Wrighton, would you raise your hand, please? Thank you so much for being here. We have uh, Provost, uh, I think he's just stepped out, but Provost, oh, he's right there. Oh, Provost Al Bracey is here. Uh, we have Aristide Collins with us. Where is Aristide? 
Welcome, Aristide. Thank you for being here. In addition, we have uh, Mardell Moffat, who is the executive director of the Kafritz Foundation. Mardell. We also have several uh, senior members of her staff, and we have board members Robert Sloan. And I think we will have at some point uh, Nazir Ahmad will be here as well. Oh, he's right here. Oh, okay. Uh, just a little bit about the vision for the Kafritz Awards. Um, this is really a vision of Calvin Kafritz. And this is uh, back around the year 2000, I think, that uh, Calvin, um, Mr. Kafritz was just really distressed that the only news that you heard about D.C. government was scandal, corruption, uh, poor practices, but yet his experience had been that there were many, many really wonderful servants, public servants in D.C. government. And he felt strongly that they were not receiving their recognition and their due. Uh, and he was determined to do something about it. And so he created the Kafritz Awards Program and uh, designed to really recognize individuals who are making a significant difference in D.C. government. Yes. So the, um, the criteria that were established is that we wanted at that time individuals who performed, who went well beyond any job description individuals who were collaborators, who were team players, who were able to pull together efforts across many agencies, across not only agencies, but with community groups, community organizations, nonprofits, uh, church groups. So they were people that had a mission and they were able to pull people together in service of that mission. The other thing that uh, we want to recognize is that they were innovators is that they developed new processes, they developed new ways of doing business that directly impacted or significantly affected the lives of DC residents. And so we recognized them for that. They were also um, people who, were, who inspired others. And they uh, were noted for developing strong teams, for lifting others to higher levels of performance. Uh, and the final thing I say is that they showed a dogged persistence. Because as many of you are sitting in here know, if you are bringing about significant change in any government agency, you're gonna have to stick with it. And you're gonna have to persist. And you're probably gonna have to listen to at least 10 naysayers for every person that comes to support you. Is that right? <laughs> And so we at the Center for Excellence in Public Leadership feel really um, so grateful that we have been granted the opportunity to be a steward for this program and to partner with the foundation and other parts of the university to recognize these just outstanding individuals and teams. Um, so for us, it's, it's very significant. Uh, the other thing I will say is that um, this is a very um, competitive process. Each year we open for nominations, and these are nominations for individuals and for teams. And it is not unusual for us to receive over 100 nominations uh, and to receive uh, 15 to 20 nominations for team awards. And so uh, we have with us today, uh, in fact, if you would raise your, if you don't mind being identified, we have several members of our selection committees. We have an individual awards and team awards selection committees. When members of the selection committee that are here, would you please raise your hand? I saw Mike Casey earlier. Great, thank you so much for your service. <laughs> and uh, during the selection process, each of us that are on the selection committees 
uh, we read every portfolio. And the portfolios are probably 30 pages long, 40 pages long. We read every one of them. And then we come to a meeting, and um, each of us walks into the meeting, and we probably have tucked in our pocket somewhere about seven people that we want to advocate for really strongly. Uh, and, some, and we hope that the other people have a few names that overlap with ours, right? And then basically, probably four hours later, um, we leave uh, not too bruised, um, but with some consensus, with consensus about our individual awards and team awardees. Uh, the last thing I'll, I'll mention before um, allowing uh, remarks from Mr. Kafritz, and this is just a incidental, it's a, a minor detail that you might find interesting, that for the individuals, the, each individual winner receives a prize of $7,500. I just throw that out there, it's of no significance, but. And each team that wins receives a team award of $15,000. So. <laughs> Big thank you to the Kafritz Foundation. And at this point, what I would like to do is, uh, we'd like to play a video, not yet. We are most grateful to the George Washington University and your team for hosting the Cambridge Awards when the Cambridge Awards were established in the year 2000. The Foundation wanted to highlight the contribution of extraordinary government bodies because the Foundation's mission is to improve lives all the residents of the Washington metropolitan area. We recognize your extraordinary contribution as one who works effectively and passionately all the while highly demonstrating the best in public service. We appreciate your commitment to transforming our community in positive ways. Congratulations. We're very proud of you. Thank you, Mr. Kafritz. Mr. Calvin Kafritz, just a little background, is the chairman, president, and CEO of the Morris and Gwendolyn Kafritz Foundation. Um, under Mr. Kafritz's leadership, the foundation has awarded more than $518 million. Yes. <laughs> to 11,696 projects. And the foundation is committed to improving the quality of life for residents of Washington, D.C. area. Uh, and we could not recognize these winners in person last year. Uh, but Mr. Kafritz personally met everyone with a series of heartwarming meet and greets uh, that Mr. and Mrs. Kafritz attended personally, um, just as an expression of their commitment and care for the program. All right, I think we're ready to move on. Uh, next, I would like to introduce the president of George Washington University, President Mark Wrighton. President Wrighton was elected president of the George Washington University on January 1st, 2022. He previously served as the 14th Chancellor of Washington University from 1995 through May 2019. Mr. Wrighton served as a presidential appointee to the National Science Board 2000 to 2006, which is the science policy advisor to the president and Congress, and is the primary advisory board of the National Science Foundation. He is a past chair of the Business Higher Education Forum and the Association of American Universities. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and a member of the American Philosophical Society. Mr. Wrighton has received many rewards for his research and scholarly writing, including the distinguished MacArthur Prize. 
We truly value his leadership. Uh, he came here at a very, uh, during a time of COVID and very tempestuous and challenging time here in the university. And he's done a phenomenal job in a short time of stabilizing the university and allowing us to build a platform to move forward. President Wrighton. Good afternoon, everyone. I was sharing with some that this is today, uh, the six month anniversary of my arrival here. And I cannot think of a better way to conclude my first six months. This program is absolutely unique for the honorees who are individuals. Obviously, you're walking away from a very lucrative luncheon and uh, to the teams also. Thank you, Jim, for the leadership you are bringing and for the impact that you bring through those that you prepare for public leadership. I also want to recognize Mayor Bowser, who will be coming soon and will be speaking with you. I've had the opportunity to meet the mayor already, and we're working with the District of Columbia government to develop the Cedar Hill Regional Medical Center, and we're also working to develop <laughs> working to develop the Equity and Innovation District just north of the campus, just across Pennsylvania Avenue. These are important commitments that we're making and making, uh, being made by the District of Columbia government. Of course, it is very important to recognize Calvin and Jane Kafritz, who are joining us virtually I want to thank them for their support and generosity and for creating a program that is unique in America. It is my pleasure to welcome you, of course, uh, to this very special place here on the heart of our campus. And uh, I'm very uh, grateful that the Morris and Gwendolyn Kafritz Foundation program is taking place in collaboration with George Washington University. Distinguished government employees are being recognized and have been uh, recognized for now 20 times. This is an annual program, obviously, that is great, uh, has great significance. The university and our Center for Excellence in Public Leadership are just delighted to host today's event, and we look forward to a continuing strong relationship. I myself am living in Washington, D.C., and as a resident and president of GW, uh, I am very passionate about public service. I'm very proud that many of our students pursue careers of meaning and purpose serving the public. All of you are an inspiration to our community, and I know that you're working tirelessly every day for the betterment of the district and for those of us who live and work here. I offer my sincere uh, and uh, heartfelt uh, congratulations to those who working, are working hard on our behalf. The winners of the Kafritz Award, as you've heard, uh, go through a, a tough process, and uh, the selection uh, of the individuals being recognized today is very significant, very selective. Thank you all for being a part of this great city in America. Thank you. Uh, let me do one thing that I, I didn't do earlier is uh, we have some alumni, some previous Kafritz Award winners here, individual and team awards. So 
Those of you that are alumni and previous KFRITS award winners, would you please stand? Thank you so much for being here. And thank you, President Wrighton, for your support uh, and tremendous leadership of the university. Now, over the last 100 years, uh, the KFRITS program has recognized over 100 individual winners and six team winners. Now, uh, before we go into actually presenting the awards, I, I want to we want to do a composite video, and this will be um, in honor of the winners of the 19th awards, annual awards. We'll do 20 later. Um, and so this will be a composite. This is just some of the highlights about each winner as well as the team winner. Um, you can uh, watch the video, but we also have everybody's story in the program book and on our website. Okay, let's cue the video. <laughs> Leadership Institute was a program that changed my entire life. It changed my trajectory on life and changed my outlook on life. This opportunity affords young people not only to earn money, but to partner with a mentor, to gain experience, to gain knowledge, and be exposed to an industry that they may not have had before. Ms. Freeman has been doing a lot of work throughout the decades of helping guide that race that these youth are running. Um, giving them a hand up and not a hand out. Ms. Freeman brings a lot to the experience of just serving young people in the District of Columbia. Young people are my heartbeat, um, and connecting them to opportunities is the rhythm. More than anything, we are the helpers. We are the individuals who go out and meet people where they were where they are at and try to bring them into the behavioral health service arena or at least explain to them what's available. When they began merging the teams together, the mobile crisis team, the pre-arrest diversion team, a lot of the work that we were doing trying to prevent deaths uh, from overdoses, they landed that on Anthony's lap. Every decision we make, every program change he's made is very much about consumers. Never assume that you can't change the system. If you dedicate yourself to the work, you start to move mountains. Part of my work has really been at the intersection of all those people that are coming home from incarceration have the opportunities that they need to thrive, not just survive in the District of Columbia. Shea, by virtue of her prior role in the Deputy Mayor's Office for Public Safety and Justice, she was our liaison uh, for the department, and so she assisted us in making sure that it moved from a concept or thought uh, to reality. We have a real issue. We have a revolving door essentially at the DC jail, and we need to do more to drive down recidivism. And so we worked, we brought together five different agencies uh, to set up a one-stop shop for people exiting the jail and coming home from prison. She does it with a smile. She does it with a sense of grace. Um, but she also does it with a firm hand. We looked at the changing attitudes about growing older. We recognized that there were many in the city who wanted very much to work, to have purpose, to have some reason to get up in the morning. If you're around Gail for more than 10 minutes, you're gonna be inspired. And what I find perhaps most remarkable is she ends up being their biggest cheerleader. She helps people to see what they've achieved and helps make them feel good about it. The immediate reaction is we're talking about older people and making life better for those who are older now, when we're really talking about making life better for everybody. It was just a fun way to um, really raise awareness of trees in the city and also just let people know that we, that DDOT has an agency called the Urban Forestry Division that is there to help residents and serve residents and 
improve lives through trees. The great thing about Casey is that she's helping dispirited communities understand the benefits and the values of trees. Without Casey's work, we just would never have, we would never have made the types of systematic inroads into these elementary schools and student age populations. I was blown away in my experience visiting the Welcome Center. When you walk into the space, it's very inviting. Uh, the staff is very approachable and you can see a number of different activities taking place. Recently we've been able to bring on a bilingual counselor to help with mental health supports. We've also been able to connect families with housing resources, food instability resources. We now have a clothing bank here at the Welcome Center as well. Our families were able to interact in schools, be more welcome in schools, feel more empowered to actually be involved in the education of their children. Okay, um, so here's how we're going to do this uh, awards. Uh, first of all, I'm going to invite uh, President Wrighton and um, Mardell Moffat to please come up, and also uh, Director, please come up. They are here to congratulate the winners. And we want to thank, uh, actually, uh, Director Lindsey Maxwell. He is mayor for mayor for an hour, two hours, <laughs> one, whatever. <laughs> I think being director of uh, HR is enough right now. <laughs> now, for the winners, um, those of you that are winners from 2019, would you please come and form a line at the bottom of these steps over here? So the individual award winners for 2019, please uh, form a line here. And when I call your name, uh, please come up on stage and receive uh, your award, and then um, stay to take a picture um, with our esteemed uh, colleagues here on the stage. Okay, we're all set. Let's begin. Uh, the first award winner is Thene Freeman. She's the Associate Director of the D.C. Department of Employment Services. I'll just add that Feeney is the Director of the Youth Summer Employment Program. I don't know how she does it. She finds jobs for these kids. She gets them to their jobs. She makes sure that they act right and properly. I don't know how she does it. She's amazing. <laughs> Our next winner is watching, and that is Anthony Hall. He is retired. He uh, was a member of the community response team. He was the director for the DC Department of Behavioral Health. Let's congratulate him. <laughs> also uh, watching is Shay Harris. Uh, Policy Advisor, Office of the Deputy Mayor for Public Service, Safety and Justice. Um, she is watching our, li our, our live stream today. Let's hear it for Shea Harris. Our next winner is um, Gail Cohn, an age-friendly DC coordinator, Office of the Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services.
our next winner um, is Dr. Casey Maria Gitaraldi. She's the Forest Health and Community Outreach Specialist, the District Department of Transportation. Uh, next, we're going to recognize the team winners, and they're already in position. One of their uh, team members, Mr. Jose Garcia, is not with us today. Tragically, he lost his life to COVID. So we are honoring him. And in his memory, his daughter will be receiving the reward, uh, award on his behalf. Uh, first, I'll call Asuncion Alvarado. Next is Ivy Chain, and to receive her reward is Raquel Ortiz. <laughs> Next is Rosanna DeMamos. Next is Elba Garcia. <laughs> Next, please welcome Morena Garcia, representing her father, Jose Garcia. Next, uh, Vicky Javier. <laughs> Next is Salim Lemma. a little choreography up here, we'll make it work. <laughs> Next is Margaret Miller. <laughs> Next is Lidi Navarro. And last, but certainly not least, is Joanne Perez Ramirez. Can you see, can you see her?
Uh, next, uh, we, we're going to have a, a musical performance. Originally, um, I was invited to sing. Uh, and Katarina put an end to that. She just, no, no that's, that Jim, that's not going to happen. Believe me, she spared you. However, we are going to have a musical performance by Allison Crockett and John Osment. Just want to say a little bit about that. We want to say thank you to the Levine School of Music, and they are one of the Kafritz Foundation grantees for providing today's live entertainment. Uh, soul and jazz diva Allison Crockett is the director of the Capital City Voices, the premier jazz choir at Levine Music. As an award-winning vocalist and educator, she is passionate about promoting music and jazz vocal education to singers of all ages. Pianist John Osment is a performer, instructor, composer, and arranger. Osment toured and recorded nationally and internationally alongside legendary musicians such as saxophonist Maceo Parker, Roger Buck Hill, and others. Osment currently serves as the adjunct professor of jazz piano at the University of Maryland and American University as well. So I'll invite you to enjoy your coffee and dessert during this performance. Please welcome them. Just so to let you know, both of us are GW professors. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to think about what to sing for this such an august group of people. I used to be a DCPS public school teacher as well. So I know the journey you walk. A difference a day makes 24 little hours brought the sun and the flowers where there used to be rain my yesterday was blue dear today I'm part of you dear my lonely nights are through since you said you were mine, oh, what a difference a day makes. There's a rainbow before me. Skies above can't be stormy. Since that moment of a bliss, that thrilling kiss, it's heaven when you find romance on your what a difference a day makes, and the difference is you. You, 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 you. Each and every one of you makes a difference to each and every one of us out here in the DC metropolitan area. <laughs>
24 little hours brought the sun and the flowers where there used to be rain my yesterday was blue dear today I'm part of you dear my lonely nights are through dear since you said you were mine oh, 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 oh. a difference a day before me skies above can't be stormy since that moment of love that thrilling kiss it's heaven when you a fine romance on your menu what a difference a day makes what a difference a day makes what a difference a day is you and you too. Thank you. I thought about doing this next song because I work with children and I work with adults and I work with seniors. But I also know after having been a teacher and having worked for the DC government, sometimes you got to find your own way. You got to find it, make it, create it, pass it along, and watch it grow, and make it grow yourself. And for all of you all, this is for you. Them that's got shall get, them that's not shall lose. So the Bible says, and it still is a new. Cause your mama may have And your papa may have But God bless the child That's got his own That's got his own Yes, the strong They get while the weak ones fade, empty pockets don't ever make the grade. Your mama may have, and your papa may have, but God bless the child that's got his own.
help yourself but don't take too much your mama may have your papa may have but God bless the child that's got his own and go God heals oh. Thank you and thank you. We hit again for our musical entertainment. <laughs> Wonderful vocalist. <laughs> All right, if I could invite Director Maxwell and President um, Wrighton and Mardell Moffitt to the stage again. I'm, you can wait. I'm sorry. I, I'm a little ahead of myself. I got to do the video. Sorry. <laughs> Apologize. <coughs> uh, so we're now ready to do the winners of the 20th um, K for its awards uh, program. And um, we're going to do it pre pretty much the same way we did it for the 19th. And uh, but first, we're going to do a video um, which will introduce um, the winners as well as the team winners. So please take a uh, look at the stage and please enjoy the video. One of the challenges uh, at the beginning of COVID was the fact that if we continue to spend money at the rate at which we are spending and that the economy is shutting down, then the DC government was going to be broke. Getting the reimbursement from the FEMA Public Assistance Program was really important to me. And I think the biggest accomplishment is that we worked to get $25 million back for the city. She is one of our go-to individuals that has the uh, knowledge and experience uh, to solve whatever problem that uh, comes up. Those hours that I was putting in were completely worth it. When we enter into a career like this, we know that you have a second family and you're here to work for that second family as well. My greatest achievement is to really bring a sense of honor to the judiciary here because it's so important that the whole system work for those it was meant to work for. Before the electronic filing system, this is how we did business, okay? Since the electronic filing system, this is how we do business. Our stakeholders were able to utilize the e-filing system and case management during the pandemic, which was a big success for this office to provide these services to the injured worker and to the employees alike. I really believe that our citizens deserve the very best in scientific and immoral um, obligation to provide, you know, that level of dignity and respect that we all deserve as humans. 
D.C. sustained a lot of deaths from COVID, um, and uh, those decedents needed a place to rest before they went on to their final resting places. I made the COVID disaster more function. We just couldn't have our decedents at a location where they weren't being taken care of on a 24-hour basis as they would if they were in-house. Everything is about teamwork, but teamwork also is about leadership, and the leadership of Ms. Lasseter in that project was of paramount importance. Scott is a community liaison. That's just a small, small speck of what Scott does for the community. The need does not stop, and neither do I. Uh, last time I checked, I crossed $4 million in associated uh, services or support. That could be direct funding. Um, it could have been an in-kind service. It could be donations that were made to us. This disconnect between real-time needs and people wanting to provide donations and how to create a match. And that has been just incredible. The network that I've been able to create really supports the mission of DHS. It just makes me very proud to see that. We need to really understand what the impact of COVID was in our community and start recognizing those who had it so that we could just begin to care for them. Individuals that came to our test site were, were actually able to know their status and prevent the spread from within their families, the community, their neighbors, and so many others. Aisha was out there on the front line making a difference, serving the city well, the citizens, make sure all the partners were engaged. I knew that I could stand up and protect others. So that includes my three-year-old daughter at the time and my family and my friends. This is what we're here for, to serve the public. And uh, I'm just proud of that. The goal then was to eliminate uh, roads in poor conditions by 2024. We have resurfaced uh, a little over 400 miles of the district's network. And that same period, we've been able to restore a little over a thousand sidewalk blocks in the district um, and about uh, 700 alleys. This team does a great job every day. They work with the rest of the agency in coordinating our efforts to make sure that we're able to provide, you know, better roads, safer conditions, um, smooth alleyways and sidewalks. We want to make these improvements and we want them to be long lasting improvements too. Uh, these aren't just temporary you know, repairs that we're performing. And that's the kind of service they should um, expect from the district. The district contracted with fully operational hotels. Pet VS Cup connects individuals to also economic support. And so we routinely have um, workers who can help clients apply for SNAP benefits. They can help clients apply for their DC-1 cards for identification. All the different things that a person needs to survive in DC. Watching our residents come in, and they come in one way, and they're hesitant, they really don't trust anyone, you know, they've been let down their entire lives. They leave just confident you know, confident and ready to take on the world. The benefits of this program cannot be underestimated, not only in terms of the, uh, the value for the individuals who were in the program, but for the community as a whole. Okay. Now let me invite President Wright, <laughs> Mardell Moffitt, and Director Lindsey Maxwell to the stage. Let me invite the uh, 20th Annual Individual Winners, if you would please line up over here by the steps. All right, we're going to begin with uh, Amanda Davies, who 
who is the Grants Management Specialist, Special Operations, Homeland Security Division of DC Fire and Emergency Medical Services Department. Yes, go get that money, Amanda. <laughs> Next is Donna Henderson, Administrative Law Judge, Labor Standards Bureau, DC Department of Employment Services. Next is Kimberly Lassiter, Supervisory Forensic Mortuary Technician, <laughs> Medical Examiner, Transport Team Unit, DC Office of the Chief Medical Examiner. If we all remember the, the heart of when we were deep into COVID, deep into the pandemic, and how many people, we were all scared, how many people were thinking about those who died? and how many people were thinking about treating them with dignity and respect. Our next person, I like to say, if he met you, you have instantly been signed up as a partner. So uh, just expect a call back. Scott Sibley is the Community Liaison Specialist for the Office of the Director, DC Department of Human Services. Scott, please. Aisha Williams is the Emergency Preparedness Planning Specialist, Health Emergency Preparedness and Response Administration, DC Department of Health. Wow. Give another round of applause for our 20 individual winners. Now we're going to move into our team awards. I want to say something about that, the generosity of the Kafritz Foundation. And when we were in the process of selecting the team awards, we were very aware of the, of the COVID pandemic of the devastation that it caused, and just of some of the extraordinary efforts that were going on to respond to it. And so we petitioned, we asked the Kafritz Foundation if they would enable us to have a special award targeted to the COVID response. And so this year, we have two team awards. Thank you to the Kafritz Foundation. The first team, uh, if you would please come to the left, this is the PAVE DC team from the Department of Transportation. PAVE DC.
First is Srinath Anand. Next is Yuan Han. Blake Holub. Andrew Kaufman. Dr. Ting Hua. Ian Maggard. Eric Onakon. Robert Smith. And Delonte Toyer will be picking up the award for Michaud Gray. And his own, Delonte Toyer. As, as they are leaving, um, so one of the things that was notable is we received uh, glowing testimonies on behalf of the PAVE DC team, is that we received testimonies from a number of individuals and groups east of the river. And many of them said that the work of the PAVE DC team made them feel more a part of DC than they had felt for a long time. So it's, their work really touches lives and makes people feel significant, valued, and a part of the community. I want to talk a little bit about the next team. And would that team uh, please uh, come forward, please come up to the side over here. This is a special award for leadership in crisis. And You've all seen images of um, a fire or some catastrophe, and you've seen an image where everybody is running away from the building and the fire, fire uh, fighters are running into the building. Think about COVID. Think about all of us afraid for our families, hunkered down, protecting ourselves. Well, there was a team of people who put themselves on the line, who went out into the streets found homeless persons who were most vulnerable to COVID, picked these people up, immediately put together housing, all kinds of things. You don't really realize all that is needed to support an individual and a family. They did it. They worked almost 24-7. Um, so this is what we are recognizing, and certainly they deserve this special award. Kimberly Baxter. Lauren Buns. Ashley Burks. Shakura Chapman. Derek Hampton. Christian Howard, Omar Jones, Sheila Jones, 
Anthony Newman. And I believe we have uh, Rachel Pierre, an admin, the administrator of the um, Family Services Administration at DHS. Uh, we're going to change the order of um, our program just a little bit. Um, Mayor Bowser is on our, her way here, so we'll give her some time to arrive. Um, and I, I'd like to introduce uh, a video um, offering congratulations from Mrs. Jane Kafritz. And so let's cue that up and show that at this time. I want to offer you our sincerest congratulations. Your innovation and creativity have had a tremendous impact on the citizens of the Washington metropolitan area. In addition, your work has had great influence nationally. Thank you so much for your service and congratulations. Just a little bit about Mrs. Jane Kafritz. Uh, she is a real estate developer and a partner uh, in several real estate develop firms, development firms in Washington, D.C. She's a former tax attorney who practiced law in the District of Columbia, and she's an active member of the D.C. Bar Association. And she's a board member of a number of prominent Washington, D.C. institutions. She's been uh, just stellar and so supportive of the Kafritz Awards program. So. Uh, we're sorry that she could not be here with us, but we thank her for, for her remarks. I would say that as we uh, wait for the mayor, that um, for many of us, uh, these last couple of weeks have, have been some, uh, felt like we came out of hibernation. And uh, we've been actually able to see people and see you face to face. Uh, I keep wanting to say to all of you, please put your screens on. Please make sure that your screens are on and uh, unmute yourselves. Um, but this has been um, a long time coming for us. We realized that we were not able to do the 19th awards program. So uh, it was very important to us to bring the 19th awardees together with the 20th and to have them uh, celebrated in person as well. And so we were very, very grateful for that. And um, I also wanna thank, as I acknowledge the members of the selection committee, uh, just their hard work and diligence, um, reading through all of the portfolios, coming well prepared to our selection committee meetings, being so passionate about uh, each of the uh, nominees and each of the finalists. We had a chance to meet the finalists several days ago um, at a reception that we had for them and, and that was quite an event as well. We also wanna give some acknowledgements. Um, Director Lindsey Maxwell is here and his team has been phenomenal. In particular, we want to thank Clarissa Ruckert, 
Uh, and what Clarissa does is she's a, a communication specialist for DCHR, but she really is so helpful in us getting the word out um, through various channels, working with all the DCHR coordinators in the various agencies, uh, having um, the uh, announcements about the opening of the nomination process in prominent places in all of the mayors and many of the mayor's communications. Uh, Clarissa Rucker is the person that really arranges all of that for us. So thank you very much, Clarissa. <laughs> also want to thank an undergraduate student um, who just informed me that she's uh, a rising senior. She's going to be a senior this year. Lydia Obi is, um, she's at the front desk. She's an amazing undergraduate, and we're just so pleased to have her assisting us doing all of these award ceremonies. Thank you so much, Lydia. And I'd like to also acknowledge uh, the Associate Director of the Center for Excellence in Public Leadership, Dr. Natalie Hopi Haddon. And I think uh, Natalie's right there in the back. Thank you, Natalie. Natalie provides so much of the glue that makes our center work. And last but not least, really the fabulous director of all this KFRITS Awards process is Katarina Pippi Brockovich. I told her that if you tired of all the ceaseless emails that you got, reminding you that she could always blame me and say, uh, Jim made me do it. Uh, but thank you so much, Katerina. I am truly uh, blessed to have a great team that I work with. And uh, I let them know that every day how much I appreciate them. All right, uh, let me say something else while we wait for the mayor. What we're gonna do after we're good to go? Oh, let me introduce her. All right. First of all, uh, let me congratulate Mayor uh, Bowser on a rousing primary victory. Mayor Bowser is very outspoken about her commitment to make sure every Washingtonian gets a fair shot in a growing and prosperous DC. We realize that Washington DC, not necessarily by choice, is unique in the American political system. The mayor is not only DC's chief executive, you could as well call her governor, you could call her counter, county executive, all of that as well as mayor. Like governors, Mayor Bowser runs Medicaid, issues driver's licenses, has tax authority. Like county executives, Mayor Bowser runs the local jail. And unlike most mayors, also oversees the public school system. In 2020, Washington DC was home to 705,000 people across 68 square miles has a triple A bond rating and an annual budget of more than $15 billion. Her administration is laser focused on making DC's prosperity more inclusive, advancing DC values, building safer, stronger, and healthier neighborhoods across DC's eight Wards. Thank, thank you, Mayor Bowser, for being here. Let's recognize her for her outstanding service. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, and hearing that giving that introduction to you is like your own introduction because it talks about the success of our administration 
and our government uh, and our ability to get things done um, because we hire the best and the brightest. So give yourselves a round of applause. So I like to start off these days by saying I'm Muriel Bowser, your mayor, and I'm very proud of the work that we have been able uh, to accomplish together. I want to Thank our friends here at the university, Jim. Uh, I know you've been at this a long time, recognizing government excellence, partnering with the district, and welcoming us here. I think I spy your president. It's good to see you, President Wright, and give him a big round of applause and welcome to the best city in the world. You'll love it here. Uh, and I, of course, want to thank uh, members of our cabinet uh, who are here uh, and who work with you each and every day. So I know today that we're honoring our 2021 and 2022 honorees. Where are you, honorees? All right, just give them another uh, round of applause. I have a list here. I'm tempted to read it, but I don't want to miss uh, anybody. Uh, but you'll tell me if I have. So I understand in 2021, uh, we recognized Thinny Freeman from DOES. Thank you, Thinny. Anthony Hall from DBH. Where's Anthony? Shay Harris for the, from the Deputy Mayor for Public Safety and Justice. Gail Cohen, the Age-Friendly DC Coordinator. And Casey Uteraldi, is that right? From DDOT? Thank you, Casey. And the 20th annual is this year, correct? Okay, so this year's awardees are the PAVE DC team. All right, PAVE DC. They're doing a lot of paving. Um, and DC Public Schools Language Acquisition Division. All right, DC Public Schools. And the Pandemic Emergency Program for Medically Vulnerable Individuals, or PEPV. So I um, get to go all around the city, and the thing that I know is that DC residents are grateful and proud of your service. Uh, especially during the pandemic when many and when everyone's lives were altered. Uh, DC government employees, uh, many, many DC government employees never uh, missed a day of work. Uh, and they worked on the front lines and they worked in person uh, and they changed on a dime to modify government operations and telework operations, uh, never missing a beat. Uh, and as a result, I believe that we stood up the best pandemic response anywhere in the United States of America. And I know we learned a lot from that experience. And part of what our residents are interested in now is that we take our key learnings and we translate them uh, into better ways to serve them. Uh, here's another observation. Uh, a lot of our residents never spend eight hours a day at home in their lives. Uh, and now when you are at home for eight hours a day, uh, you notice what's happening on the sidewalk, in the alley, the trees. You think about different ways to interact with the government, like now you want to build an addition on your house and now you have to get permits and you know you just got a mortgage in eight minutes so you don't want to wait 30 days for your permit. You see what I'm saying? Now we have a lot of our residents even thinking about using services. I see Dr. Morris Hughes in the back. A lot of people are changing jobs, not DC government employees, but a lot of people are changing jobs. Uh, and so now they're interacting with DOES uh, in ways that they've never interacted uh, with DOES. A lot of people have discovered uh, our camps. You know, we have 8,000 kids at camp right now. Thank you, DPR, uh, for doing that. And they're looking for different ways uh, to engage in the government. So our challenge is to make sure that we're staying uh, up to date and that we can match uh, innovation of the private sector. Uh, because our customer is different. Our customer is demanding different things 
even since this pandemic, from their government and their expectations about how fast we deliver, how creative we are thinking. Um, I'm just really challenged and excited. Uh, I heard someone say yesterday, and it was, it was the, the perfect thing, uh, I think, uh, as we recover from this pandemic. She said, we've been waiting for this moment. We've been waiting for this moment to be challenged to think differently and have the resources to actually implement and serve our residents in different ways. So I can't do a single thing without you uh, because you, you all are just showing up for DC residents and getting things done. And I know that you will continue to do it. Uh, and we don't have enough ways, often enough, to say thank you. Um, but you can represent all of your colleagues, all 37,000 DC residents, and hearing from me personally, I appreciate you and I thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Bowser, for making time to join us today. Really appreciate your remarks and all that you're doing for the District of Columbia. Thank you. Uh, before, I have a few directions for us before we depart, um, but really would like to say that um, we could not have made it through these uh, two and a half years of working uh, on this program, the KFRITS Awards program. It took a lot of support and work with the KFRITS Foundation. So uh, the executive director of the foundation is Mardell Moffitt. Mardell, would you please stand up so we can recognize you? Just And we also have several members of her leadership team here, uh, associate directors of the foundation. Would you all please stand as well? I think we have one in the back here somewhere as well. Thank you. Uh, as we adjusted to the pandemic, uh, the program you're seeing here, Mardell, this must be our fifth iteration, is that correct? We've been through many iterations, as all of you have in dealing with the pandemic. Uh, a couple of other things, yes, oh, thank you. Oh, that's right. Uh, just a couple of other things. First is she's handing me something here, and I think you all have something on your tables. So we would like to drink a toast, and I don't think it's strong enough that all of you can drink and still drive, hopefully, so that, I think that's gonna be good. But please, let's make a toast in recognition of all the fabulous people who have provided such a shining example to us, not just today, but for many years and many years to come. Congratulations, here, here. Again, thank you all for being here. Now, what we'd like to do uh, we would like to get uh, Executive uh, Director Moffitt, we'd like to get President Wrighton, uh, we'd like to get Provost Bracey, uh, we would like to get Director Maxwell. If you all would lead now, we want you to go back so that we can have pictures taken with you. Um, so if you all were just holding your seats, we want to get um, them back there for the photo op. Just keep drinking your champagne, it's, it's, it's cool. One more thing before we go, I think we have some uh, senior leaders uh, from DC government who are here in support of the award winners. Would you all please stand so we can recognize you?
Now, let, let me say um, what it takes to be a senior leader in D.C. government and a person responsible for some of our award winners. Because our award winners don't always stay on the rails. Uh, they, they cut their own pathways, they make it happen, and uh, sometimes the people who are here to support them have to run cover for them. Is that right? Uh, they got to provide a little cover because sometimes uh, our award winners in their exuberance and their enthusiasm and their focus on the goal they may, and creativity, okay, they may tick a few people off uh, as they create their own pathways. And so these people, these are the people who are courageous enough to support these tremendous innovators. So let's support them again. Let's thank them again. OK, I think we have everything in place. So thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing this ceremony with us. And for the winners, we would love to have opportunities to take pictures with you. We have the step and repeat sign outside. We'll see you in the back. Thanks again, everybody. Drive safely.